Gaat u zitten. Please be seated. Welcome, excellencies, special guests, ladies and gentlemen, dear students. So we are 83 years of age today, and I'm proud to say that Tilburg University is very vital and successful. Research and sustainability takes place on the interface of economics, law, and ethics. It focuses on topics as climate change, corporate social responsibility, sustainable development and investment, environmental economics, and nature protection law. And the Tilburg Sustainability Center was founded in 2009 to bundle, focus, and further build on the sustainability research profile of this university. And today, in this academic session, we present it to the outside world. And who better to invite as a guest speaker on this launching event than Vice President Al Gore, a man highly adept at bridging the gap between society and academic research in the field of sustainability. And this afternoon, he will give a presentation about Thinking Green, the economic strategy for the 21st century. And it's my real pleasure to give the floor to Mr. El Gore. Thank you very much. It is a great honor for me to be with you this morning. And I congratulate Tilburg University on your 83rd uh, anniversary of your founding and also on the tremendously uh, impressive founding of this new Tilburg Sustainability Center. I truly believe uh, that this institution has an extremely important role to play in helping us all understand society and understand the unique situation that we are now facing. And the integration of research uh, and learning uh, in the fields of economics, law, and ethics, uh, with focusing as well on uh, behavioral psychology and business development, as well as the other uh, disciplines in which you have established expertise, and integrating uh, knowledge from all of these fields into an effort to better understand the tremendous sustainability challenge our world is now facing. This represents a, uh, an extremely important effort. So what better place to establish this sustainability center? Sustainability uh, is a topic that we approach in this day and time in the context of great economic uncertainty in the world. Relatively speaking, the Netherlands uh, has done well in uh, the aftermath of the Great Recession. I was speaking to a Dutch friend uh, yesterday and asked, uh, how do you feel about the economy? And he said, I feel fine. And to me, uh, that recalled a story that I first heard uh, 35 years ago in my home state of Tennessee in the American South. I live in Nashville, which is the home of country and western music. And there is a cultural institution there known as the Grand Old Opry. And years ago, one of the comedians, it's mostly about music, but there was a famous comedian named Cousin Minnie Pearl. And she was from way out in the country in a rural area she wore a straw hat with the price tag still hanging on the hat, as if to uh, emphasize her uh, complete uh, lack of sophistication. Uh, her character was very rural. And she told a story. I was driving in my automobile on a Saturday evening, having conducted six town hall meetings with my constituents. Uh, and I was tired driving home, listening to the radio, and she told the story about a farmer who was involved in an accident. And he went to court and sued for damages. And the driver of the other vehicle also hired a lawyer who put the farmer on the witness stand and 
placed him under cross-examination. And the lawyer asked the farmer, now isn't it true that immediately after this accident, you said, I feel fine? And the farmer said, well, it's not that simple. <laughs> you see, I was taking my cow to town in the back of my truck. And this man came driving across the center of the highway. And the lawyer said, wait a minute. We don't want to hear a long and involved story. We're in the middle of a trial here. Just answer the question, yes or no. Did you or did you not say, after the accident, I feel fine? And the farmer said, well, I was leading up to that. <laughs> you see, I was taking my cow to town in the back of my truck. And this man came driving across the middle of the highway and ran right into my truck and knocked it over. Threw me out, threw the cow out. I was on one side and the cow was on the other. And the policeman came up and took one look at that cow and said, mm, she is suffering. Pulled out his gun and shot her right between the eyes. <laughs> he came around to my side of the truck and said, how do you feel? <laughs> and so I said, I feel fine. And I think there is something of that feeling <laughs> in the way in which my Dutch friend said that he felt fine about the uh, economy. But you know, when we talk about the subject of sustainability in connection to the economy, it is uh, best to recognize, in my opinion, that Capitalism is at a crossroads. Capitalism is, in my opinion, and in the opinion of most, the best form of economic organization ever devised. Why? Because it rather obviously unlocks a higher fraction of the human potential. It also efficiently allocates resources and balances supply and demand. History has proven that over time it is more conducive to higher levels of political and economic freedom. But the engine of capitalism is the system of organic ubiquitous incentives that encourage work, innovation, creativity, uh, and stamina. So the nature of those incentives is particularly important to any effort to understand the operations of capitalism at any given time. I believe that over the last several decades, we have seen a foreshortening of the time horizons against which those incentives are based. There has been broad discussion of the evils of short-termism in the modern global economy. 30 years ago in my country, the average holding period for stocks or equities was six to seven years. Today, the average mutual fund in the United States turns over its complete portfolio in less than 11 months. This short-term approach has consequences because the process by which real value in companies is built up over time is itself an organic process, reflecting the human interactions that are at the core of any business. 80% or so of the value, the real value of a typical company builds up over a business cycle and a half, roughly six to seven to eight years. This is because it takes time to complete a business plan, to hire employees, to establish supply chains, to find markets and brand identification and all of the other tasks that involve multiple human interactions and naturally take time. But if the source of investment in companies is now disconnected from the natural organic cycle of value creation, that has an impact on the incentives that drive behavior within companies. Recently, a few years ago, 
one of the leading business research organizations in the United States did a comprehensive survey of chief executive officers and chief financial officers. And one of the questions was a hypothetical. Here is an investment, the questioner said. It meets your targets for quality investment in your company. It will make your company stronger, more profitable, and more sustainable. But if you make this investment, you will slightly miss your next quarterly earnings projection. Given those facts, will you make this investment? 80% responded no. And that answer will not come as a surprise to observers of the current business environment. And yet it is nevertheless functionally insane. Because important investments that build real value are being declined on a routine basis if they do not return the money invested in a very short time span. At a moment when our entire civilization is faced with the unprecedented challenge of shifting from carbon-based fuels to renewable energy, uh, modernizing the technologies in common use to achieve much higher levels of efficiency, shifting to sustainable agriculture and sustainable forestry, these kinds of changes cannot pay for themselves 90 days at a time. And yet, if the ubiquitous pressures from the investment marketplace penalize executives and businesses that have the boldness and wisdom to make the investments that actually will pay off over a longer period of time, then we end up crippling the ability of business to make the changes that society needs them to make and that they themselves need to make in the best interests of their long-term shareholders. It is common to decry the evils of short-termism, but we are now seeing the short-termism that is causing these problems get even shorter. 